for a long time in my life, being a wife and a mom did not add value to me because I did not understand how valuable those positions are. You are now listening to the Highlight Real Builder for Authors, the Going North Podcast. I'm your host, best-selling author of the book, Stay the Course, and Maxwell Leadership Certified Team Member, Dom Brightman. And you're going to be getting some tips and techniques to advance yourself up next. Today's episode is sponsored by the book that will empower you, encourage you, and through its expression, help you to advance to your next level. Stay the course. The Elite Performers, Seven Secret Keys to Sustainable Success by this guy right here you're hearing. And the good news is you can now hear the book on audiobook. So head over to Amazon.com or Audible.com or Apple Music, pick up the audiobook. And that's today's sponsor. Go out and buy a copy or a few of Stay the Course, The Elite Performers, Seven Secret Keys to Sustainable Success, and Advance North to Your Next Level of Greatness. And today on the Highlight Reel, Builder for Authors, known as GMP, the great, glorious, and glamorous, is the Going North podcast, and we got one heck of a super special, awesome human for you today, because she's a fellow JMT, baby, that's right indeed, oh, wait, actually, I think we don't call ourselves that anymore, uh, we call ourselves the MLTers, yeah, yeah, there we go, yeah, yeah, that's right, the Maxwell Leadership Team, baby, that's right indeed, the legacy legs of Mr. John Maxwell, indeed, that's right, that's right, indeed, because not only is she a fellow transformational coach, teacher, trainer, and international speaker, she's also a super special, awesome lady because she's a devoted wife to a wonderful man who served in the honor for 24 years, as well as a mom of five and a grandmother of five. So she believes in all the high fives, indeed. And don't worry, the high fives can have gloves if you're still afraid of the COVID thing that's out here, sadly. But she operates in the purpose and expertise as well as a savvy real estate investor on top of all that. So we got a wonderful Jill of all trades and Jack has to step out of the way yet again. So let's give it up for Miss L.M. herself, the legendary and magnificent Laquita Monley. How you doing today, Miss Laquita? I am doing well. I'm doing well. I have no complaints. How are you? Ah, doing good. Doing good with all the O's out of a Cheerios box. <laughs> and you were having a super fantastic day. Oh, yeah, that's right. Fantastic. That's right. All the fans like I'm in church. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like all the fans on a hot <laughs> Sunday morning <laughs> at a one-room church in Mississippi. <laughs> fans are the big topic of the day like that's the must have <laughs> <laughs> that's right especially ceiling fans right <laughs> right right <laughs> fans, fans, fans. it's just a fan you in need of a fan i'm telling you got <laughs> <laughs> a little experience with that one <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, my goodness, my goodness. Well, and speaking of fans, I'm sure you got tons of fans because you do so much. And my goodness, like, did you ever see yourself ever being both a mother and a grandmother? Like having five grandkids as well as five kids? I did not at all. <laughs> I did not. Funny enough, growing up, I only wanted one, maybe two children. Um, did not want five for sure. It wasn't a part of my plan as a young woman growing up. Uh, my plan was going to university with one of my best friends. At the time, we, were, we both wanted to go to Jackson State. I'm from Mississippi, so we wanted to go to one of the best um, HBCUs in the South. And from there, you know, each pursue graduate schools and, you know, just live our best life. And at some point get married, have one kid, maybe two, so that the one kid wouldn't be spoiled. And that is not at all what life had planned for me. It was, it went in a very um, different direction for sure. 
And now I do have, you know, the one older child. And unfortunately, all five of my children are spoiled, but we'll talk about that topic on another day. <laughs> so, and right now I'm living the best part of my life as a grandma. It is by far the best days of my life to date. So yeah, just it's kind of how things worked out. Uh, that's how they worked out more ways than one, I imagine. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. You know, we can plan. My grandmother has this saying, she says, man can plan and God can unplan. And he's <laughs> always laughing at our plans. And, you know, he, he it's like, you know, Lord, you should have told me something, you know, you didn't give me a heads up or anything, or at least I wasn't listening, <laughs> you know, and, um, but I thank God for my journey, the, the journey that the Lord allowed me to live, helped to create the woman that I am today. So no regrets, look back on it, even, even some of the bad times now in this stage of life. And at this stage of maturity, I can see why some of those things had to happen, um, in order to grow me and mature me in some areas, you know, to prepare our family for some things, um, places the Lord was going to send us things he was going to have us to do that. If we had not been prepared prior to, we may have failed at the mission. So it's exciting. It's exciting. Every day that we live is exciting. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, you, we really learn to take it one day at a time. Oh yeah, definitely say that again indeed, definitely say that again indeed, and definitely one day at a time, and heck, probably, <laughs> the days probably felt like years in a day, because you're actually a military spouse, and if I'm not mistaken, your wonderful husband spent 24 years in the army, if I'm not mistaken, right? Absolutely, absolutely, we, I am a proud army wife. My husband served 24 years active duty army and through his um, service, uh, through our family service, we've been blessed to live in a number of states across the U.S. as well as we've lived in two different countries within Europe. We lived in the U.K. and in Germany. And that, of course, you know, being stationed there uh, gave us the opportunity to visit uh, quite a bit of Europe and had an amazing time. We had an absolutely amazing time, met some amazing people. Uh, again, like that's one, one of those things where those shared, those experiences came into place, right? Um, I met my husband back in 1992. Might date myself a little bit right there. <laughs> I met him in 1992. And uh, as the saying goes, the rest is history, right? There's a lot of history in between that. We've been together in relationship 30 plus years and we've been married 25 plus years. We just celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary this past uh, February uh, 25th of 2022. And, um, you know, from high school sweethearts to grandparents. So, you know, there's a lot of history in there. And that the longevity in our relationship and the growth that we had by the time we left the country in 2010 definitely better prepared us for the experiences that we would have from 2010 to 2017, which that was the amount of time that we lived outside of the continental US. Um, but, you know, like I said, uh, life's a journey and every experience, whether it was good or bad, prepared us for the things that we had yet to, to experience um, in our life, you know, prior to becoming a part of the Maxwell leadership team, uh, becoming a speaker in the Maxwell leadership team in 2007, the Lord had opened up a door and I began to minister um, at different women's organizations in Texas and, and in Mississippi. And so in 2010, when we left the country, uh, even more doors opened up and my husband and I found ourselves uh, ministering in churches and organizations across um, the UK. And it's like, wow, okay, you know, wasn't expecting this. You know, the army said you had to go to the UK. By the time we got to the UK with, in January of 2010, by February of 2010, we were keynote speakers at a marriage conference. And it was totally unexpected. It was one of those things, like I said, the experiences that we had prior to 2010 prepared us to walk in purpose in 2010, from 2010 till now, 
as ministry leaders, as speakers, as coaches. And it's just amazing how God does things. It really is. It's amazing how God does things. And uh, one of the big takeaways uh, of my life, the life lessons that I've learned is, you know, we've all been told that our perception is our reality. Our mindset matters. And how I perceive a thing is how I will respond to a thing and how I respond to a thing totally determines my life. And so we've learned the importance of things they do. What I think is what I will speak. What I speak is what I will do. And what I do determines who I am. And that foundation is one that I carry with me always. And being able to look through those lenses definitely has shaped and molded me into the person that I am now. And also helped me to understand that there is no greater purpose on this earth than to live my life for Jesus. The second greatest purpose on this earth is for me to be present and available with my family. The third greatest purpose on this earth is for me to share my faith and help to build other people, to be a people builder. And that's what it's all about. Oh, that's what I'm talking about indeed. And my goodness, my goodness. So stationed out in the UK in yes. January, then February had one heck of a Valentine's Day day being double keynote speakers <laughs> at a marriage conference. <laughs> we had never done anything like that before. The first time we were asked, we said no. And, you know, uh, the individual was persistent to say the least. And so we said yes. And, and you know, we spent the last two weeks of January and, you know, the first week of February preparing and, you know, just honestly, like, how do you do this? Like, I know how to speak. He knows how to speak, but how are we going to make this a tag team effort? Because we were both main stage at the same time. And I thank God for grace <laughs> and the way he brought it together. And from that moment forward, as much as possible, we tag team like that because that our the the energy and the flow and the connection that God gives us it just makes the experience so much greater. And we found that it becomes uh, even more meaningful and and impactful to the couples, uh, whether they're premarital couples or couples that are already married. It becomes more realistic to them. Uh, to have both people speaking and having that conversation at the same time, being able to bring both gender perspectives to the table. And um, our transparency is also very key. Yes, we, we're believers in Christ. We love the Lord, but our humanity is our humanity. And so we really believe in transparency and honesty. Marriage is a, is a beautiful covenant. It's of God. And let what he's brought together, let no man put us under. But that last part, let no man put us under, stuff will happen to want to tear up your marriage. It's really how you're going to view it and how you're going to respond to it, determine the longevity of your marriage. And so uh, we found that the way that we do that is absolutely um, beneficial. And we've been blessed to be able to help a lot of couples properly prepare for marriage and to help a lot of at-risk couples vitalize or revitalize their relationships and have healthy, productive marriages. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about indeed. Definitely powerful. And kind of the first time when you mentioned the last part, let no man put us under, it's like, my goodness, like, <laughs> kind of <laughs> made it extra real. It's like, you know what? Like, man, it can put so many things asunder now with the tools of social media and all these other distractions and, of course, mm -hmm. COVID. So how was the whole situation, the marriage situation during the pandemic? Do you feel like uh, your relationship got even stronger or did you almost kill each other and still <laughs> find a way to still stick together even stronger? Like, how, how was that whole process? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. So it, it's funny enough, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was doing a, a TV show up in Dallas and I was asked that same question. Funny enough, because of my husband's career, during the large portion of the COVID lockdown, he was stuck in Kuwait. So he was stuck in Kuwait from September 2019 to January 2021. So we spent a large portion of that time separated 
yes, technology is technology. So we were able to see each other and talk to each other on FaceTime and whatnot. Um, but that doesn't keep conflict from happening. You know, conflict can happen whether you're under the same roof or at a distance. Conflict can happen. And the thing that we've learned over our 30 plus years of relationship is this, communication is the cure to all confusion. We were taught that by our former pastor. He taught us that commu effective communication is the cure to all confusion. So when we learn how to effectively communicate, and that starts off first by being emotionally intelligent about yourself. So a lot of times in the marriage arena, we love to use this book, The Five Love Languages, and it's a phenomenal book. But we can also look at the five love languages, um, kind of like we could do the Maxwell method of DISC. When I understand my personality type or my love language, how I like to receive things, but I also understand the personality type of my significant other and how they like to receive things, an effective way to communicate and connection. The communication becomes most effective when we're able to connect with our intended audience, right? John wrote a great book about that. Um, that has been one of the things that helped us hold together, COVID or no COVID. We've learned how to effectively communicate. We've learned how to listen without the intent to respond, but simply listening to understand the other person's perspective and point of view. We've learned each other's love language. We've learned each other's personality type and communication type. And we've learned how to reach each other where we are. Now, none of that means we're always in agreement with each other. Let's just be clear, we're two totally different people. And a lot of times we will not agree. We've learned to still live life even though we've disagreed. I can understand my husband's perspective. Ben can understand my perspective. Does not mean he agrees with me, but we've learned to do that. So then we can also map out, okay, so now what's the way forward out of this situation? And knowing that there's no win-lose. This is what's gonna be best and let's move forward. And that's COVID or no COVID. So by the time he got back here in January, things were as they are. Of course, we'd not seen each other in over a year. So we were absolutely excited to see each other again. And by that time, things were opening up more and more here in the state. So COVID did not have a negative impact on us. <laughs> not like that. <laughs> wow. That's powerful indeed. That's what I'm talking about indeed. So you're that right, folks. Send your spouse overseas. Make them join the military. That's how you <laughs> keep your marriage. Let me stop. <laughs> how you do that? <laughs> we did, you know, we, we did have, um, you know, because we're both preparing and rich uh, certified uh, facilitators. And that's just you know, marriage enrichment, right? And that COVID what COVID did for a lot of couples um, and everybody had to stay at home, it forced them to have to deal with issues that they had not dealt with in the past. So, you know, uh, American lifestyle is go, 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 do, do, do. We live a very fast paced lifestyle. So oftentimes something happens with the couple and the couple wants to address that issue. However, with all of the things that are going on, especially with the couple have children, so you got work, you know, you know, you may have Brandon needs, you know, your kid Brandon needs to be at karate at five o'clock and uh, your kid Denise, she needs to be at dance practice by 615 and old oh God, baby David needs to be over here at T-ball at this time. So you've got parents who are working and trying to get the kids out to all of their activities and you know, other things that are going on. And so they never can find and map out a good time to deal with the argument that we had or this elephant that's been in the room to eventually life just says, you know what, forget about it. The elephant is just going to be the elephant and we're going to live around it simply because of the lifestyle, not because they didn't want to address it, but lifestyle didn't afford enough opportunity to address it properly. COVID says, oh no, everybody's locked in the same room in the same house. Now, all of these elephants that have been out there that you thought were gone, they all piled on you at one time. And it's one of the things that I let my clients through was, let's identify the elephants. 
We cannot fix all the elephants in one session, but let's put these elephants in priority and we'll deal with each elephant as in priority. One elephant may take two sessions, 10 sessions, it, it doesn't matter. But as long as a couple is committed to working through each of the issues, it can be worked out. But it's identifying. These are the things that are good. These are the things that are bad. Let's put them in priority. Let's learn some skills to help strengthen our strong points. And then we'll learn some skills, also some conflict resolution skills to get through these elephants that have been in the room, right? And as we work through them, building couple cohesion, building couple communication, building couple connection, and having that safe space to do that, uh, it's amazing that healthy couples, I'm going to emphasize healthy, healthy couples are able to do this because that's the desire of their heart is to do it. Sometimes you just need a little help, you know, somebody to referee real good and to ask good questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Teach that act, those active listening skills. <laughs> yes, Dave, yes, Dave, for those who are taking notes, you better be taking a lot of them because McQueen has been dropping all sorts of gems in Dave so far in this wonderful conversation. Indeed, that's right, indeed, because that communication definitely indeed yeah with the elephants like <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like hey you got a whole safari going on in some relationships it's like oh let's leave the whole safari here and it's like sometimes you gotta take them on one at a time you can't really take on the whole herd of elephants herd at one there. time <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> right right <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing that sometimes we want to depending on what your personality type you want to try to fix everything at one time and i i want it all fixed and i want it all fixed right now well it didn't all get broken at one time so you're not going to fix it all at one time oh so let's be patient right <laughs> it took time to break it's, it will take time to heal and mend and that's for everything you know we we've We've been blessed to be able to partner with individuals and couples over the years and uh, couples that have experienced any, anything on the, on the gamut of, of issues, right? From infidelity to um, finances and everything on the in-between. If two individuals, whether it's infidelity, because that's generally like, oh no, I'm not making light of infidelity, but here's the deal. If after an act of infidelity is committed, if both individuals in the relationship want that relationship, then both individuals have to actively work on making that relationship work, right? And it's not set on anyone's timeline. Oftentimes the offender wants a timeline because they don't want to have to keep rehearing or reliving the thing that they did that they're not sorry about. Or even sometimes the offended person thinks that there should be a timeline. And, and there's the fact of the matter is there's no timeline for healing, right? There's no timeline for rebuilding trust. You can't put a timeline on that because each of us are different individuals. There's a process of grief in the way people grieve because that's exactly what happens in those situations. You experience a trauma and you experience grief. And now I'm going through these, these stages of grief and there's no set order, right? In the Christian community, we love to, and, and the scripture is always the scripture, you know, we're supposed to forgive, right? But forgiving doesn't necessarily constitute for uh, forgetting. And my process of forgiving is much more complicated than me saying, I forgive you, or me pretending like everything is okay. And that's where a lot of couples fall into that trap. They say those, you know, I forgive you. We're going to pray about it. We're going to go get prayer about it. And then we're just going to try to live life normal. Well, the offender is like, oh, and if this whole facade of living life normal, if it's consistent over a period of time, then the offender is like, oh, stuff is normal. And then one day a trigger happens. And it sends the offended party into 
banana mode and hysterics. <laughs> Why? Because the healing never really took place. The saying I forgive you and pretending things are okay and just moving on, that's not a healthy process. We have to walk through processes and, and process this thing. And those couples, my recommendation to my clients is that they need to do it individually and as a couple. Because individually, the person that was offended, you got to process some stuff. Individually, the person that committed the offense, you have to process some stuff. Because here, culture tells us, current pop culture or whatever culture we're living in right now, right? Tells us that, you know, you got the high value men, you got the high value women and people are operating on the high frequency, low frequency, all of that. And I think all oh, that's a bunch of garbage. I've been married a long time. And what I have discovered in life is we do what we want to do when we want to do it. And nobody can make us change our mind. So if I have committed an act of infidelity, bottom line is it was because I wanted to. I could fish for all the excuses I want. You know, say, say my husband was gone because my husband was gone 18 months. He left me here alone. He shouldn't have left me here alone. We had arguments over the phone. We can't resolve these arguments. His career always has me gone, has me gone and I'm lonely. Any number of things, right? The world would say I'm justified in have, having had an affair. Here's the deal. If that's how I felt, I could have got a divorce and then slept with the person I wanted to sleep with. You can't have your cake and eat it too. So if you're committing <laughs> acts of adultery inside your marriage, it is not your partner's fault. I don't care what your partner is doing. If you're saying, okay, my partner is, is abusing me, leave. Leave. And that's, that's a sticky situation we won't really get into because if, if you're being abused, sometimes leaving isn't as easy as just leaving, right? But within that, if I've made space to commit adultery, then when I was making that space to commit the adultery, I could have been making space to leave and process the paperwork and get the divorce. Again, understand every situation is not cut and dry. There's a lot of gray in each situation. So we're just gonna use a basic scenario here. Man and woman married, wife is unhappy, tries to talk to husband, husband is working hard because the man in him says, I gotta, I'm the provider protector and he's providing and protecting. And so he's working 12 hours a day, six days a week. And she's running with these three, four kids and she's feeling raggedy. And all of a sudden this single parent dad, who's always at his daughter's dance practice, you get too friendly. And the next thing, you know, you're commiserating together. And then the next thing, you know, she's sleeping with the single dad parent while the husband who has been inattentive can't say he wasn't being inattentive he was being inattentive well sis you could have divorced him if it was that bad so now you want to sleep with that man and you want to sleep with the other man too and then tell your husband it's his fault that you slept with that man no we're adults no one can make me have sex with them if they don't if i don't want to if you make me have sex with you and i don't want to that's rape Consensual sex is just that, it's consensual. Same thing with the man. Oh, the wife wasn't doing this. She doesn't cook anymore. She doesn't clean like she used to. Her hair is all over her head. I married her and she was, you know, stacked like a brick house and now it's just a flop. <laughs> <laughs> and all of that could be true. But that does not justify you sleeping with the firm stacked and fully packed coworker. That doesn't justify you sleeping with her. You slept with her because you wanted to, had nothing to do with your wife because you could have divorced her and then went and had the relationship with that woman. It comes down to choice, basically. It comes down to choice. And we live at a time and an age where no one wants to take personal responsibility for the choices that they make. We all have a but. Well, we do. All of us have one. And generally, they stink. So... <laughs> Yeah, I know I did that, but I did it, but because you did A, B, and C. No, no, no. You did that because you wanted to. It's really that simple. And these are just some of the things that we talk about 
with our clients. So we talk about when we're at marriage retreats and conferences because you have to be real with people because by and large society has given everybody a carte blanche card to do what they want to do and then shift that blame. Like when Adam was shifting the blame in the garden, when the scripture tells us in Genesis that when the Lord came in walking through the midst of the garden, the cool of the day, Adam wasn't where he was supposed to be, where Adam normally meets God. And he said, Adam, where are you? Adam said, I'm over here. I'm hiding. I'm covering myself because I'm naked. The Lord said, well, who told you you were naked? And he was naked because of the sin that had entered in, right? He knew he was naked and he covered himself with the fig leaves. And he said, well, Adam, what did you do? And I'm paraphrasing, right? He said, Adam, what did you do? And he said, well, you know, it's this woman you gave me. And the woman said, oh, it's that serpent. She beguiled me. Nobody wants to take responsibility. <laughs> no, we have to take personal responsibility. Mistakes do happen, right? Mistakes happen. I might not have intentionally left the house that day to go have an affair with this person, but yes, you did. Yes, you did. You took extra care with your appearance. You took extra care with your smell. You took extra care with the clothes you put on. You took extra care because you knew it was a possibility. We say all of these excuses, but at the end of the day, it's about adults making adult decisions. And we can say, oh, I'm only in this relationship because of the children. Well, I tell you what, children know when your relationship is not healthy. I don't care how small they are. I'm staying together to make it better for the children. So you don't like each other, but you living with each other and all that animosity and elephants just floating around. And you think your children don't notice that. And that's not producing an unhealthy perception of marriage towards your children. No, you're not helping them. You're not helping them. So many people that we've spoken to who do eventually end up in divorce. And when they're talking to their children, with a particular couple, the kids are uh, right now ages seven and 10. And they were, and this couple decided to go through couples family therapy together to um, help the children get through the divorce process, right? In the session, both children told their parents, oh, we already knew you didn't like each other. You're not hiding anything from the children. You're not doing, we, as adults, we like to think that we're doing, and we do, we do. As, as good parents, you're doing what you think is in the best interest of your children. Having those conversations with your children in a healthy way, in a healthy environment, can be some of the best things that you ever do for your children. Not maintaining an unhealthy relationship. Boom. That's what I'm talking about, indeed. Because, yeah, you're definitely right. The kids do know. Like, hey, you may think they don't know and they're not paying attention, but they know. Like, the kids they have know. no filters either, too. So it's like <laughs> when, the, when the opportunity presents itself, you will hear the truth. <laughs> exactly. 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 You know, and, and so I'm not a therapist. Let me put that out there. I am not a therapist of any stretch of the imagination. What I do as a facilitator, a facilitator of conversations, and I learned how to facilitate these conversations in a healthy manner through the certification process given by the Prepare and Enrich um, organization. Do clients come to me that need professional therapy? All the time. And I happily let them know that this situation that you're experiencing is above what I can do. I recommend that you go seek therapy. And now sometimes, in some cases, the, um, the couple seeks the outside therapy, but they also still want us to, as coaches. But in, in it's situational, situational. Sometimes, even in our transformational coaching through Maxwell Leadership, um, some of the one-on-ones, sometimes clients need professional therapy. And as a coach, I can't give that to them. I'll do more damage than I will do good. So the best thing that I can do as a coach is let them know to seek out that professional assistance 
with managing their emotions and their thoughts. And when they're in a better place, a better, healthier place, you can always come back and see me as your coach. And I gladly help you and partner with you on your journey to become the best version of yourself. And it, it happens. It happens. It happens sometimes. And I'm just happy that I'm able to be able to help point some, some other kinds in, in the right direction. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's what I'm talking about. Indeed. That's right, indeed. So, my goodness, so with all the help that you do with the couples, is there, and you already mentioned communication, I usually ask for three things in times like these, but heck, what are two things in addition to communication which makes a healthy relationship? So, communication branches off into so many different areas, right? Great communication and great connection uh, produces a greater level of intimacy. And intimacy, not sex, but intimacy. Great communication, great connection produces a greater level of intimacy. And through that greater level of intimacy is where we build trust, right? It's where we build uh, and start to develop the core values of our relationship. We all, I always encourage cu uh, couples what does success look like to you? What does success look like for you and, and family, right? What are the core values of your family? Let's put, let's, let's think about those. Let's map those out. And when you have those things working together, of course, we're not going to leave out sex because that's a major part of a marriage. It's a really big part of the marriage for the men and for the women. For women, I'm not every woman, but some women don't feel comfortable having sex if those other two pieces aren't met. And men want to have sex in order to feel connected and get those other two pieces. Well, if I can get effective communication and connection going for both people, operating and building intimacy will come naturally and it's natural uh, for both parties to, to, to then enjoy your sex life and whatever you have determined that sex life to look like. There you go. There you go indeed. That's right indeed. It's like having them right pieces to the puzzle. Some puzzles are 10 pieces, some are 3,000. You know, it's got to have those right pieces in. Exactly. Play. Exactly. Exactly. And it's, it's really good for premarital couples to understand that because again, you have two different individuals coming from two different walks of life, two different backgrounds, what they've been raised. And a lot of times we just, we enter into marriage with these hidden expectations, right? You just expect them to be on the same page with you, with you about certain things, because in the dating and the courtship, everything was, you know, might've had some ups and downs, but by and large, everything went great. You're now engaged. Okay, now let's bring some things to the table. Let's talk about, you know, communication. Let's talk about connection. Let's talk about finance. Let's talk about children. Let's talk about sex, you know? And what do you like? What do you don't like? What are your expectations of me? Or what are my expectations of him? We don't tend to talk about those things and map those things. And I don't want to say map them out, but put them out, put your cards on the table so that your partner doesn't walk into a situation where, oh, I thought that you would be okay with this. And you're saying, no, I'm not okay at all, right? Like, I thought that you were okay with me just texting you sometimes. And no, I just accepted that for the time being because your job had you here and here. But no, I expect you to talk to me while we are sitting in this house together not just sitting in front of the TV. It's the little things that we brush off when you're dating and not living under the same roof that can become a big problem when you're living under the same roof and you're married. We have to talk about those things. Again, like we said, I said at the top of the broadcast, effective communication is the cure to all confusion. If we can effectively communicate and connect the other building blocks of healthy relationship will come together well. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Indeed, that's right. Indeed. 
That's right, indeed. The good reverence got y'all covered, y'all. We all relationships covered, indeed, like five blankets, y'all. I'm telling you, <laughs> indeed. Almost like an arms dealer, because she's well equipped and certified, y'all. I'm telling you. That's right, indeed. Got that disc, indeed, and everything else with all the training. Tell us that the APAC abs going for your relationship, y'all. So if you listen right now and you need somebody, relationship coach like Laquita and the wonderful husband's got you covered like five blankets, indeed. I'm telling you, that's right, indeed. Because she's been dropping hot fire, indeed. Because if you got that chaos in your life, you need to up up that communication game, get that connection game up on fleek. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, such a bit on this wonderful podcast tour and been guesting on shows and spreading the good word of all the wonderful stuff that you're doing. Is there a question that you wish you'd be asked more often? Mm. I. I wish I was asked more often why being a wife, mom, and uh, grandmother is so important to me. You know, because oftentimes, you know, people will read your bio from time to time. People will ask me, oh, you know, tell me about yourself. And I'll let them know, hey, I'm a proud army spouse. So that makes me, I'm a wife, a mom, and a grandmother. And I'm a minister of the gospel. And those are the things that are bringing the most value to my life right now. And the reason that I wish I was asked that question more often is for a long time in my life, being a wife and a mom did not add value to me because I did not understand how valuable those positions are. No one said, hey, Laquita, you're worthless it was how I was viewing my life and how at that time, culture and, and everything that was successful, you know, had women, you know, upwardly mobile, whether you were this amazing entrepreneur or, you know, this amazing C-suite corporate individual that was, you know, had the academic accolades and, and, and the corporate accolades and, that's what made you a successful woman and you managed to balance out children as well. Just looking at all of those things and not understanding the true value of womanhood, I devalued myself for a number of years, a number of years until I reached a revelatory moment in my life and realized that was insane of me to think that way. And so now one of my biggest mission with women is to help them to identify their places of courage, destiny, and power. And it's like, sis, God designed you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made, created in his image and in his likeness. He gave you dominion and power over everything that creeps upon this earth. And because he created you a woman, and the first woman's name is Eve, and it, and it means mother of all things living, the cycle of life on this planet cannot continue without me. I am important. And that's whether you go to work or don't. If you decide I'm going to be a stay-at-home mom, that is absolutely an amazing position of power and authority. If you say, okay, I do want to go to work, praise God, that is absolutely amazing. And you are successful as well. I help women to identify who they are and whose they are. Help them to understand that your purpose, your God-given purpose on this earth is amazing. Now let's go pursue that purpose with a passion. And a, a lot of women that I meet that are wives and mothers, especially in our military community, they don't value that position. They do not value that position. And whether you're a single mom or a married mom, we don't we don't value that position not enough emphasis is put on the fact that women keep the life cycle of this planet going without us the human race would not exist sis know your place know your purpose know you're powerful and if you are a wife the scripture says he that findeth a wife find a good thing and find favor in the sight of the lord current culture around most 
first world nations have women believing that the man is the gift to you. And I'm not man bashing. I love me and I love my husband. That's just not what the scripture says. You lucky if you find this a good man. No, he lucky that he found you. Every success, most successful men that you, that, and I'm not just talking success in the entertainment industry, most successful men that are well-rounded and healthy men and know who they are, attribute their success to their wives, being their backbone, their stability, the person that gave them the, 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 the push and the, and the encouragement they needed to be the best versions of themselves. The scripture says, he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and finds favor in the sight of the Lord. The position that brings me the greatest joy in my life is being a wife, being a mom, and being a grandmother. Because I help to influence the next generation of greatness coming out of the monthly lineage. You would have asked me that back in 2004. You would have got a different answer. But the me sitting here in 2022, I understand my position and my place of courage, destiny, and power. Not just in my home, but on this earth. And so, yeah, I wish people would ask me that question more. Like, why is being a wife, mom, and a grandmother, why is that so important to you? Boom. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. The sound ministry running out of mics, y'all. She keeps dropping them. I'm telling you. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. She's dropping that <laughs> hot fire, y'all. I'm telling you. That's right indeed because it's so darn true. It's actually kind of <laughs> a little bass awkward going on around here on the earth with the first world of folks walking around confused and letting mm -hmm. folks uh learn a little too much a little too fast and mm -hmm. all the folks experiments not not the same thing wrong with experimenting within reason and especially mm -hmm. if you're a christian within within the boundaries of the good book itself but it's like yeah some folks get a little too far off the deep end and it's like oh man we got confusion everywhere we got headless chickens and we got camels <laughs> with no humps it's 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 definitely a little <laughs> on the crazy side of the game. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's one of those things like, you know, my daughter and, and some of the other young women um, that I get to speak with. And, you know, women, we're at one of the better stages of, than we have been in, in years, right? It's so ter in terms of equity um, and inclusion is concerned. Still got a long way to go, but it's better than what it was, right? And in that situation, you know, I tell them, listen, just because you can does not mean you should. Just because I can let that man know how I feel about him does not mean that I should. And now let me just be clear, if you're out and about you're at a club or you, you're, you're doing whatever you're doing and this gentleman is attractive enough to you and you want to go out on a date. And so you ask him out on the date. Just because you can does not mean you should. Because again, I'm old school. I'm old school. And I come from the generation that a man pursues that what he wants. He pursues the job that he wants and he gets it. He pursues the car that he wants and he gets it, right? He pursues and does what he needs to do to get the money to buy the house, the car, the clothes, the jewelry, whatever it is that a man wants. Once a man sets his, a man sets his mind to it, he goes after it and he gets it. Since you're no different, if this man has set his mind that he wants to pursue you, he will. So if he's not, is he the man for you? No matter how attractive you are to him. Now, does that mean he won't accept your advances? He's a man, he's gonna accept it, right? But it does not mean that he has the same outcome in mind that you do. And some of my sisters do that repeatedly over and over and over again. Well, since you keep doing that and it's not working, I'm gonna just need you to assess yourself right quick. <laughs> again, not every situation is the same. And you know, I had one sister tell me, well, and I had, well, this couple, recently in a session and the man in the the said well 
you know, well, what if he's, basically the question was, what if he's not brave enough to do it? Then my question is, is do you want him? Is that the kind of man you want? If he's not, if he can't get his confidence together enough to approach you, where else is that lack of confidence going to show up in your relationship? And that's already showing up in other aspects of his life that's going to cause problems. Because what I do on a small level, I do it on a big level around my life. So if he's not courageous enough to approach you and risk rejection, is he going to be courageous enough to go ask for that raise on the job? Is he going to be courageous enough to go fill out the application for this promotion? Is he going to be courageous enough to go the extra mile to be the provider and protector that that poor, that the Lord requires him to be in your relationship? Probably not, because the brother might still need to grow and develop some more immaturity. Don't take the, you know, when you take a cake out the oven, it ain't ready, it flops, right? It sinks in. <laughs> Let him stay over there a little bit longer. He's still baking. Be patient. If he yours, he coming. Because the scripture says, he that found the wife, found the good thing, and found favor in the sight of the Lord. Let the man keep baking. Then you won't have to be the one to carry that load. Because if you prove yourself to be the bold and courageous one, then you're going to set the precedent that you'll always be the bold and courageous one. And if he was comfortable with allowing you to do it on that small level, he's going to be comfortable with allowing you to do it on all the other levels. Because, you know, food for thought. Well, speaking of food, don't be a cake sunken man, y'all. That's right indeed. That's a sunken place on a new level indeed. That's right indeed. Don't be a cake sunken man. That's yeah, right. I mean, and it's still bacon. <laughs> still bacon, right? Or it's like it's like this, right? You have a man who has the traditional woman in mind. And every time you go to this sister's house, she never cooks. She's ordered in, she's catered. Bro, if you've never seen a pot, I doubt sis can cook or wants to learn. Did you ask her that before you asked her to marry you? And now you discover because your family coming, she can't cook and has no intentions to want to learn. You should have left her over there and let her keep cooking too because she wasn't ready. Or either you're going to be okay with a woman that can cook. But if it goes against the core values of who you are and what you have envisioned your wife to be, now who are you mad at? Are you mad at her or are you mad at yourself? You need a sister, where she at? She eye candy, she looked good. But she was not the ideal wife for you. She didn't want children. You thought she was going to change her mind. Nope, she was pretty adamant about that. It's not who you wanted her to be. And she's not going to change. Like it, it goes both ways is basically what I'm saying, Dom. It goes both ways. He that found the wife found the good thing and found favor in the sight of the Lord. Well, men, do you know what you want out of your wife? Or do you know what you want your wife to be? And, you know, men, are you ready to be the kingdom man that your wife needs you to be? It goes both ways. Oh, yeah, that's right. The day peanut butter and jelly goes both ways, y'all. It goes you. both ways, man. <laughs> it goes both ways. People are often ready for the marriage ceremony. They're definitely ready for the wedding night, but they're not ready for the covenant. Mm. Big difference in those three things. Massive difference in those three things. Yes. Day, just a day. They ain't ready for the company, y'all. That's right. Day, that's one of them episodes you got to play back three times over, y'all. I'm telling you, that's right. <laughs> day, that's right. Day, you got to hat trick yourself in this episode right here. Got to play it three times over. Relationship, goodness for the couples. In day, that's right. Day, that's right. Day. So my goodness, you got this wonderful book coming out, but by the time this launches, the book will probably be out already called Redefining Success, Eight Tools I Use to Develop a Growth Mindset. So yes. if that, yes, indeed. So if that book was a food, what would it be and why? 
oh, if that book was a food, it would be a healthy steak. And why? And it would be a center cut filet mignon. Why? Because it is, it's rich, it's, it's filling, and it's layers. On a good cut of filet mignon, you can see the layers right in the cut. And the book has those layers. And each layer, each of those eight tools uh, to the growth mindset are necessary. Are tools that I found necessary to help me grow and develop as a woman, as a wife, as a mom, as an entrepreneur. But the foundation of the growth was me as a woman. And so whether you pick it up as a man or pick it up as a woman, right? Your growth is, is determined by your personal development. The hats that you wear, you'll be successful at wearing those hats because of your personal growth as a human. Ah, uh, yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Uh, so the steak has been a popular answer recently on this show. Uh, hopefully I didn't lose any vegan listeners. Um, <laughs> <it's a good laughs> okay, then, for the vegan listeners, it's a great oyster mushroom. <laughs> it's a great oyster mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> meaty <laughs> meaty <laughs> oh lord <laughs> you know you know gotta appeal to us all <laughs> or you know for our pescatarian listeners is a great cut of tuna Great cut of tuna. <laughs> Wild caught. Wild caught, not farm raised. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yep, yep. <laughs> with that silliness of mine, it reminds me of the classic uh, Jesus and the 5,000 that he fed with the fish. It's like, <laughs> imagine feeding him feeding them today. Like, hey, I'm vegan. Like, you sure this is bread gluten free? <laughs> like, yeah, I fish know, are right? <laughs> Whole wheat of seven grain. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> and then dude throws up his hands like, all right, this rapture happening now. All right, I'm tired of y'all. Let me stop. on this show anytime so we're coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive and that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're 25 again but you're in the year of 2022 with all of your knowledge and experience what advice would you give to yourself wow so if i was to wake up and i was 25 again i would tell myself lay off the bread it does not love you back number one because, yeah, <laughs> and the bread did not love me back. <laughs> and number two, I would tell my 25-year-old self, because that was how old I was when I really began my journey and my walk with the Lord. I would tell myself not to be so uptight. Don't be so uptight. This journey is the best thing that has ever happened to you. Take this journey seriously, but don't be so overly uptight about it. Take the lessons, learn the, you know, as you go through these experiences, learn the lessons, receive the blessings, but do it with joy and don't be so uptight. <laughs> that's what I would tell myself. Yeah, that's right. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. That's a sad song indeed. Can't play the Teddy Pet and Grass on that one. The bread don't love <laughs> it back. Dang it. The <laughs> <laughs> bread rejected your love. <laughs> oh, 
Oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you got me crying. <laughs> That's right. Next time you go into bread out in the grocery store, you never look at it the same. Like, darn it. I listen to Teddy Bendergrass in my head now. Darn it. <laughs> the bread did not love me back the right way. Like, I love it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it left me with the yeast for expansion. And I had to work like crazy to let it get it off. Like, oh, don't do that to yourself, sis. I know. Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> 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 I'm saying i'm saying i had to put in two a days man i had to work out twice a day for a year to fix that problem <laughs> so i would that would be the first thing i tell my 25 year old stuff put the bread down <laughs> oh man that's what i'm talking about today well, yep. well, before we ask folks to follow you and ask you where all your socials and things, usually I like to ask fellow children of the king to share the salvation testimony. So my sharing yours for the folks listening so that way folks can get a little deeper dive in what to expect, at least from your side of the wonderful walk. So short synopsis, I was born and raised in church. But when I left home at age 18, I left the kingdom. Like, I did not believe, I still believed, I didn't want to go to hell. I just didn't want to go to church. So at age 25, at that time, we had five children, um, but we didn't like each other. My marriage was in shambles. Our finances were in shambles. My world was just in shambles. And with both of us coming from, you know, the South and being raised in church, we, all we would get in ways of encouragement and support is just, you know, pray about it, talk to the Lord and uh, go to church. But honestly, none of that was working. It did not help. It did not help because no one taught us about relationship. And so again, at age 25, we, we were introduced to a church here in Colleen, Texas. At that time, the church was called New Zion Christian Fellowship. We went a couple of times and it was real different than the Baptist church we was I was raised in. And on this particular message, the pastor was preaching, come to the other side. And he was preaching a message literally about uh, when, when Jesus was inviting him to come to the other side. He was in the ship and he was preaching and everything that he was saying was hitting home to me as, a, as an adult, right? And that was the first time that I'd ever heard about relationship with the Lord and how that relationship can help improve me. And so at the end of that service, I, I answered the altar call and my life has never been the same. Um, and, you know, transparency, that initial altar call that I answered, I answered it with the, with the intent that my salvation would be an instant, would be instantly happening and God would instantly save my marriage and he would instantly make all things right. That's not what happened at all. That's not what happened at all. Um, but at age 25, I found out about the importance of relationship with the Lord and, and through my relationship with the Lord, uh, understanding his word, understanding what prayer is and how to pray and grow in that relationship with the Lord. My vertical relationship with the father became greater and being filled with the Holy Spirit became greater that made my horizontal relationships with my family my friends and, and strangers i would meet begin to strengthen the biggest transformation in my life was my transformation from the inside out through my sanctification journey my salvation was instant and my sanctification has been a journey and still is a journey but it started with that salvation experience at age 25 when I learned what relationship was. And relationship has nothing to do with the name of the church that I attended or the building that the church was in. But it had everything to do with my intimate relationship with the Lord through the study of his word and through prayer. So um, my salvation experience was like a lot of people. I was, at, I was in Lodi Bar, I was the bottom place of my life and I needed a lifeline. And Jesus showed with me that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And he offered me that lifeline, and my life has never been the same. Ooh. 
That's what I'm talking about today. That's what I'm talking about today. The other side of the day. <laughs> yes. That's right today. Yes, indeed. Got a dad joke for that one, but I'll save that after I stop the recording. Because <laughs> I'll kill the vibe on that one. But my goodness, but for those who need to keep in contact with you and keep up with all the stuff that you're doing and even check out your wonderful podcast too because you got some wonderful leadership tools as well what's the best way for folks to do so the best way for people to con- to contact me real time is through social media so if you google laquita monley l-a-q-u-i-t-a m-o-n-l-e-y if you google laquita monley all things laquita monley will pop up I am the person that runs my social media so if you message me if you message me in my dms I do respond uh, relatively quickly to my um, to my messages. Now, that being said, my brothers and sisters that do not live within the continental U.S., give a sister a chance. I might be asleep when you message, <laughs> but when I see it when I wake up, I do respond. They can also find me on my website at www.laquitamonley.com. Feel free to you can find my blog there, a link to my podcast. Um, as well as um, become a member of the Laquita Toolbox Academy community. It's a private community. Um, and we share some amazing things in that, in that community, have some great conversations. It's all about growth, right? For focused women who are walking in our purpose. So there's, that's just a number of different ways um, that individuals can reach out to me. I'm most active on LinkedIn. Um, I am also on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I do have a YouTube channel as well. So there's many ways that people can reach out. Just Google my name again, Laquita Monley. All things Laquita Monley will come up. Your preferred mode of communication, your preferred social media platform, you can reach me there. If you're saying, okay, Laquita, I don't do social media, go out to my website, click um, on the contact us form. And shoot me an email from that contact us form, and I'll email you back. That's right. There you have it, folks. Head over to the wonderful LaquitaMolly.com today. Check out all of her wonderful wares. She's got you covered like five blankets. Even got a wonderful toolbox indeed. So not only Jack has to step out the way for the metaphorical Jill, but Bob the Builder, <laughs> he's out the way too. Because Laquita's got you covered, baby. She got a whole toolbox, baby. I'm telling you. Your relationship, can we fix it? Yes, we can today. That's right, indeed. Yes, we can. Like it's 08 Obama in the building. That's right, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <That's> goodness right. <laughs> before I go even deeper down my usual use Carl Silva slash silly joke routine any party words before we close up shop <laughs> I just encourage the listeners men or women wherever you are in your life right now do you know who you are do you know whose you are Do you understand your purpose? Are you walking in your destiny? If the answer to those are no, then please know your identity, find out your identity, understand your purpose and begin to pursue that purpose with a passion. If you need help and you wanna partner with someone um, I am available. We can jump on a quick discovery call, see that we're a good fit. And if we're not a good fit, and if it's someone who's within my network that I believe is a good fit for you, I'm happy to recommend it out. But it is so important, Dom, no matter what we're doing, personally or professionally, to understand our identity, to know our purpose, and to pursue that purpose with a passion, that brings joy to your life when we are able to pursue our purpose with a passion. Thanks a bunch for tuning in and setting aside some of your time to listen to this wonderful podcast going north. If you really enjoyed what you heard, do me a solid and share this with your network and someone that you care about that would get something out of it too. And be sure to subscribe to hear more and heck, even check out the backlog if you would like because there are hundreds of episodes to choose from and they just keep getting better and not better. 